Welcome football fans, but most importantly, USFL fans to another episode of Tell Me About It from the USFL Network. I'm your host today, Ace, and I am so excited to be talking to the championship coach of the Birmingham Stallions, Skip Holtz. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Ace. It's good to join you tonight. Glad I could be here. Oh, so glad. I told you before the show, you're a big fish. We've been trying to catch you for a long time. You said you don't really look at your phone, so I'm glad I was finally able to get a hold of someone who could get a hold of you so we could get you on. Well, I'm glad it worked out because, Ace, I've been a big fan of this show, and I've been wondering why you hadn't contacted me to be on it with all the other people you had on here. But I'm just glad I made the cut at some point. <laughs> well, right before season two, it's kind of the perfect time. So, you know, it's a little dubious that it didn't happen till now. It's perfect. We get you in the middle of training camp in a dark conference room. I love it. The ambiance. Exactly. It all, it all works. <laughs> it works. I also love the hat. Are they going to sell that on the website soon? Oh, these are, this is big time now. This has been very popular with the players. The players are all trying to trade me. They're all trying no to way. trade me hats. And I said, this one's not this one's not for sale. This Beham is like, this one's staying. This may be a year ago I wore a hat that just said USFL on it. So this year I think we're going to have mm -hmm. to represent go strictly with the Birmingham hat. <laughs> I love that. It, I mean, if that became a Skip Holt staple, just wearing that at every game, that's what the people are coming for, right? The brand recognition. Maybe, maybe I should trademark this. You know, maybe I ought to trademark this since I'm going to support it and wear it all the time. <laughs> yeah, honestly, just hit them up. Say, hey, I'll be your official brand ambassador, Skip Holtz, championship coach. You might know me. And they might, you know. <laughs> I got I got it. I'm, I'm in. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to work that. I'm going to definitely have to work that. I love it. You know. Got all the side jobs you got working on. You would have to look at your phone a little bit more if you were going to do that. I have to admit. No, I, I I agree with that. It's just you know when you get during camp, it just gets so hard because oh yeah, you, know, you don't you you've got a Twitter and a Facebook and you have all the accounts, but you just don't have time to read. Heck, I don't have time to read my emails. I I pulled my emails up the other day and I have like four hundred and seventy six unread <laughs> emails. Just and we've only we've had three days of practice. You know, but you just you get into wearing the hat of a head coach, uh, an offensive coordinator and a quarterback coach is probably way too much. But I have enjoyed this so much. I've loved coaching again. I've loved sitting in the quarterback rooms. Uh, I've loved being able to orchestrate the offense to put it all together, having the opportunity to be a head coach. But it is very time consuming and there's only so many hours in the day. It sounds incredibly time consuming. Averaging 175 emails a day is horrifying to me, but you know, that's what happens when you're <laughs> as successful as you are. So I have a couple questions when, when you and win. hopefully I won't take up okay. when you win. Yes. Hopefully it won't take yes, up too much of your win. day. But win, you have a lot. Well, had we lost, I'd have like, one after three weeks, you know, one email after three weeks. But when you win, it's amazing how the uh, you become very popular. <laughs> that ha the curse of popularity, you know, the curse of success, as they say. We'll take it. But coach, we'll take it. my first question is that I'm sure last season there were many high moments. You know, it's a championship season, only one loss, tons of high moments. But I wanted to know specifically, other than the championship win itself, what was the high moment that sticks out to you whenever you think back on season one? The relationship with the players, getting to know the young men, everybody. We had lost a couple of football coaches, and I told every coach that I talked to that interviewed for this. It's like I can tell you right now, one of the most rewarding years I've ever had in coaching, um, having the opportunity to spend the amount of time we do with our players. There's no classes. There's no, I mean, it's all ball. And there's no distractions. I just, uh, I really love that. thing. we've got great young men. I keep telling the story that a year ago we put our draft together. Uh, higher staff flew down. We all met for about a month before the draft. We watched every player at every position. We ranked them all one to 20. When we left there, I told the staff, your homework is to go home and call every one of these players at your position. And then call me back and let's talk and let's re-rank them. And all of a sudden, a guy like Scooby Wright, who might have been number fourth on the list, became number one. Like, we got to find a way to get that guy on our team. His why is too strong. 
He's got personality. He's got character. Uh, we want a guy like that on our football team. And, uh, boy, it really paid dividends for us on the field. But it was also one of the reasons that it made so made it so rewarding off the field. And having the opportunity to, right before I got on here, I was eating dinner with a player tonight, uh, just sitting down and getting the opportunity to get to know these guys, where they're from, how many are in their ch- in their in their family, uh, what they studied in college, kind of what they want to be when they grow up, type of thing. I mean, it was just it's really been rewarding and one of the more enjoyable things I've done. That sounds like a fantastic high moment. A lot of high moments, all built into one, just with the relationships with all of the players that you have. I love that. And a player's coach, you know, you really are practicing what you preach. Well, I do enjoy the people side of this. I mean, I think we all love to compete. We love the games. And, you know, the victories are great. But even the championship game, uh, for me, my best moments of the championship game are watching those players hoist that trophy, uh, watching some of those guys light up a cigar, uh, seeing the hugs in the in the locker room after the game, just the relationship, the bonding, the closeness, the togetherness of that team. That's what that's what this is all about. And those are the things that I know we're all going to miss when we're away from this game. And that's going to be the camaraderie of the locker room and the togetherness of the brotherhood and being able to share all that. But those things get developed. And I thought the football team a year ago really bought in and was a big part of our success. I absolutely agree. You could tell the just closeness of the team and that helps with the chemistry on the field, chemistry off the field transitions. And I remember the cigars after the championship game, Scooby showed up a little late to the presser shirtless smoking a cigar and put it out with his fingers. It was yeah, beautiful. exactly. I don't <laughs> think uh, the people in Canton were real excited in the locker oh. room about all the cigar smoke. I don't think they were real excited, but our players were real excited about winning the game. So uh, yes. yeah, it was, it's just, it's, you know, everybody's got a story. Every single player in our locker room has a story. They all have uh, hurdles they had to climb to get there. They all have things that probably could have broke them. They all had adversity in their life. Uh, but then when you get to see them all celebrate and enjoy that sweet taste of victory, all of a sudden looking back, all the hard work, the time, effort, and energy you put into camp and everything else, it was all worth it. And what an unbelievable feeling to be uh, to be a champion, you know what I mean? To be a champion in a league and to tote home that trophy, to bring it back to Birmingham was a great feeling for all of us. Yes, sir. And my next question, I feel like you've kind of answered it a little bit through your first answer, but we saw a lot of turnover with coaching staffs, with coaches and with players this off season. But even when there were reports that you were getting offers here and there, you never seemed to waver on the fact that you were coming back for season two. And I was wondering, what was the main reason that you decided I'm coming back? Well, one, I'm incredibly um, excited about having the opportunity to come back and work for Fox. Uh, I think that was last year, as I said a minute ago, was one of my more enjoyable seasons I've ever been through. And I wanted to do it again. I have been in college ball my whole life. I had some opportunities to go back to college this year, but was really just was really excited about coming back here with this being professional football. Uh, I enjoyed it as much as I did. I got an opportunity to have my first fall off my entire life. Uh, I think I tried to make up for 40 falls of work uh, all in this fall. I was at a different game every weekend. I went to see my son who was coaching in Charlotte. I went to see my daughter who's working for Seattle. Went and played a member guest with my other son uh, who lives in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I just, I, I traveled, uh, went to a lot of games. We had an opportunity to do an awful lot of things. But uh, when you get all that, you do that for a couple months. And it was like, okay, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to go back to work. And I, and I was excited about having the opportunity to come back here and really wanted to come back here. It would have taken an incredible situation to get me away from here. And like I said, I'm very indebted to Fox for hiring me a year ago and giving me this great opportunity in professional sports. And I've told this story before, but Rick Neuheisel, when I first took the job with Fox, Rick Neuheisel said, you know what, just um, make it about your relationship with the players and it'll be the greatest experience you've ever had. And he was right. And I put it into that. And my relationship with these coaches and these players uh, was all what it was about coming back. And we lost a couple coaches. Now we've got about 80% of our team coming back. Um, but in 
bringing in new coaches, uh, it really wasn't hard. I think people started looking at what this league is all about, the job that Fox has done running it. And I look at the staff right now that we've put together, and um, I couldn't be more excited about the experience and the type of people we have in this program right now. Yeah, I got to say, with being a Gamblers fan, we had a lot of turnover in players. So the fact that you have 80% back, I am jealous of the Stallions fan base and how the player retention you were able to have. But you talked about how easy it was bringing coaches in. And I mentioned the turnover earlier. We have four new head coaches in the league this year. Yes. And I was wondering, you know, do you have any history with those coaches? And which one of the four are you looking forward to playing the most? Well, I've known John Filippo for a long time, um, known, known as father since uh, I was a head coach at Connecticut going way back to the mid-90s. Uh, so I've, I've known I've known the DiFilippo family for a very long time. And and with John being here in uh, Birmingham with us, with our, our teams, New Orleans and, and Birmingham being together, uh, obviously uh, we work together every day. We put our schedules together. Uh, we got to make sure we're coordinated with what we do and who's where when. Uh, but I'm excited about getting on the field with New Orleans. Obviously, I think there's a lot of natural geographical rivalries that are being formulated right now. Uh, with Houston and Memphis, with Birmingham and New or- with Birmingham and New Orleans, with uh, Michigan and Philadelphia, with New Jersey and Pittsburgh, I think there's a lot of geographical rivalries being formulated. With as much time as we're spending with those people in these hubs right now, but um, I'm excited about all of them. I know. I mean, we had a great game. We had a great game against New Jersey to open the season last year. We won right at the end. Obviously. Uh, having a three-point win against Philadelphia in the championship game uh, <laughs> is going to help create some rivalries. Our only loss was a team in Houston. You know, I mean, was our only loss in a 17-15 <laughs> game. Not that I remember the the safety that we took and the dumb call the head coach made to, to help seal the fate of the Birmingham Stallions in that game. But, you know, that, that was a great game. That's a game that a lot of guys have circled on our calendar. The four teams in the South, being Memphis, New Orleans, um, and uh, Houston, are, are games that I'm excited about because we play each one of them twice. And mm-hmm. even though we were very fortunate to be able to win a lot of football games, I mean, you go back and you look at it, we had like seven one-play games. And you mm-hmm. go back and say, you're seven plays away uh, from being three and seven, you know, and, and not being there. Yeah, that's how close it was. And I just think there was great parity in this league, and I think there's going to be, uh, there's going to be, it's going to be repeated again this year, and there's going to be a lot of parity. There's, there's only been eight teams that have repeated in the NFL since 1965, and you look wow. at it, four of them were in the first 15 years. There's only <laughs> been four in the last 45 years when you look at it, and there hadn't been a repeat team since 2003 when New England did it. And like mm-hmm. you know, you talk about Tom Brady has seven rings, but he has one repeat. So it's not easy to do, and I know it's not going to be easy for us. And there's going to be a lot of roadblocks and hurdles in the way that we're going to have to climb to get there. But we're excited about the opportunity. And this is a new team. We got some new faces. We have some new coaches. Last year was magical. It was uh, something that we'll always remember. Those pictures are going to bring back lifetime memories. But this is 2023, and we don't get spotted any points. We're going to get what we earn, and it's all going to be how we grow and develop and become a football team during camp and how we can pay attention to the details and the little things and improve as a football team. I love hearing that, Coach, that you know, you're going into the season thinking about how hard it is to repeat. You know, it, I don't sense any cockiness, any you know, entitlement. It's we're here to work, and we're here to get it again. Well, I absolutely we- love that. We feel like we were very blessed. I mean, we had some guys that made some great plays, but you got to have a lot, of, a little luck going along the way. Mm-hmm. You got to stay healthy, and all the stars lined up, and uh, our players did what they did, and things came together, and we were able to win. But um, there's two things, and and I told the team this. I mean, there's the quote that says, "If what you did yesterday seems big to you, it just means you haven't accomplished anything today." I mean, that is one of them that I believe in. And then the other one, well, and it is it is a good one to keep us humble and hungry uh, for where we're trying to go right now, for sure. And then um, 
I just think that's that's the whole mindset of where we have to be right now. We just have to stay humble and hungry with where we want to go and what we want to do and find a way to be as good as we can be. I don't know how good that is this year, but I just want to make sure we're as good as we can be. Well, I hope it's good because my game I have circled is specifically the Birmingham Stallions for the Gamblers. Uh, everybody says, you know, you weren't trying that game. They're like, they were, you know, relaxing people for the championship. I was like, I talked to Skip after the game. Not I true. know that they were trying. And Not people true. are like, that nope, game nope. Still, that's the game I have circled too because – it still puts a big knot in my stomach. I can promise you that we didn't try and throw any of them. We made we talked about it as a as a football team, and that going into that game last year is that for us. I, we talked about when we get a chance to go play, we want to go win them all. That was the goal. We didn't sit down our starters. We didn't rest a bunch of people. We didn't inactivate guys and start somebody else. Uh, we were trying to win them all, and that was the mindset going into it. We just weren't able to get it done, and. I think at the end of the year, I think Houston was playing as well as anybody in the league when you look at the way they played the last couple of weeks of the season. I Obviously, I agree because, you know, I'm their fan, maybe their biggest fan, but I just love the humble nature that you bring to it, Coach. I absolutely love it. And earlier you talked about, you know, how long it's been since there's been a repeat. How about how long it's been since a spring league has had a season two? Exactly. You know, it's been about 40 years. So this yeah. is the – First time in 40 years that there's been a season two, and you had a full off season because of that. One of the first spring off seasons. What part going into season two was the easiest or easier because you had a full off season? Because of the full off season, well, yes. I think having a little bit of an off season, uh, you feel like you've recharged your batteries. I mean, I've been kind of like we're in middle of January. It was like, let's go to work. I mean, let's. When do we start practice? <laughs> we got to wait till March 15th or March 20th to start. Let's, I mean, like, let's go. I mean, we've got the batteries plugged in. We're charged up. Uh, let's get this show on the road with what we're doing. And so I think the off season really helps everybody recharge your batteries. But I also think our, our player personnel director, Zach Potter, does an unbelievable job. And this season was built. These teams were built for season two. Uh, we had our original draft class, but then it was all done off free agency. Um, mm -hmm. And I think um, that was something that Zach Potter did an excellent job. It gave our coaches a chance to sit down and watch film, to be able to talk to guys on the on the phone uh, before we signed them. But uh, we've signed quite a bit. And when you look at uh, season two, we've all got 13 more players. We went to camp last year with 45, where this year we're coming to camp with 58. So we've all got 13 more players on our roster than we had a year ago, even with some of the attrition, as you talked about. So mm -hmm. a lot of new faces, a lot of new names. But, um, again, having the offseason to be able to put the whole free agency together, to put your staffs back together, to teach your playbooks. I feel like what I'm doing right now, I feel like summer camp. I feel like I feel like this camp is like spring ball from when I was in college. The only difference is right at the end of spring ball, you get a chance to put the ball on the tee and go compete for a season. That is super cool. I never thought of it like that. Uh, I always did enjoy spring ball. You know, it was less, I don't know, less pressure in spring right. ball. But I guess you guys, then you're teeing off and all the pressure is on. Which brings me to my next question. My last question that I got for you, Coach, is that a lot of people like to make the argument that Birmingham won the championship and almost went undefeated because they had 10 home games technically last season in Birmingham. Now yep. that there's four hubs and there's four different teams who will all have more chances at home field advantage, are you excited to go silence all the people who made that argument and show them in season two that it's what you're doing on the field, it's not what, what's happening in the stands? Well, if we could have only won at home, we, would have, we wouldn't have been gotten very far in Canton. You know, yes, because we went, when we went to Canton and, and all of a sudden you're playing up north, that wasn't a home game but we still were able to beat New Orleans and we were still able to, to bring home the conference championship against Philadelphia. So uh, I think, yeah, there's some advantage to being at home, but you know what? One of the advantages to being at home is you don't have to travel, but nobody mm -hmm. had to travel. You know, nobody True. had to travel. Nobody had to get on a plane. Nobody had to go uh, travel four hours to be able to get to where they were going to play. We were all in the same hub. We all walked across the street. We all had the same travel to play the entire season. 
And so, I don't know. They can all say what they want to say regardless. Uh, we just got to go play the game. It was great. I love the people of Birmingham. Uh, they were incredibly supportive for us, and I'm very appreciative for that. But I also know that um, that having the opportunity to play six ga- excuse me, six games here at home for the 2023 season, and we'll go play four on the road. And if we got to go play four on the road, that's how we got to go play. But I do know that our field is the same length as everybody else's. It's 120 Ooh. yards wide when you include the end zones. It's 53 and a third yard wide. Uh, the field is the same. We still just got to go play the game. And I think that's one of the things that we've talked about as a team. It's going to be a great opportunity for us uh, and a great challenge for us at the same time. Ooh, Coach, that was kind of my question to poke the bear a little bit, see what happened. And I absolutely love that quote. You know, it, the field is the same length, 120 yards, including the end zones. Yep. Ooh, I'm going to have to clip that, turn that into a short or something. <laughs> that was great, Coach. I loved that. Uh, and I wasn't trying to offend you. I honestly do think you that you didn't offend me at all. You dead. didn't offend me. And I've heard it. And you're not the first one that said it. And people are going to say we want it home. But um, you know what? I mean, under the same premise, we lost to Houston at home. You know, we won two games on the road when we beat New Orleans and Philadelphia. So, well, like I said, you just got to go line up and play the game. The field's the field. The biggest thing about travel uh, is in playing away is having to travel, to get on a plane, to travel across the country. Uh, we all had the same walk, about probably about 50, 50 paces across the street, you know, to <laughs> protect the stadium. We all had the same travel plans uh, to get there. But – I mean, this year it's going to be a little bit different. I think it's great. I love it that we're in four hubs, and I am hoping that this league can be as as successful as it was a year ago. And a year from now, we can be in eight hubs, and everybody can have their home games. I think would be absolutely awesome. But I think the plan that Fox has put together and the way that that Moose Johnson is running this whole thing, uh, I think the vision has been awesome. I think the vision has been incredible. Uh, I love the plan. Uh, I just think it makes a lot of sense, and I think it's I think it's got a great shot to work. And like I said, I'm as much as I'm as excited as anybody as seeing everybody get an opportunity to be in their home home hub. Oh, I love it, Coach. You know, like you said, the vision is there; it's being executed. Yes. And for the people who are still complaining about it, they're just not paying attention. I know? I agree with that because I do. I mean, I, I think there is plenty of talent. I'm I'm excited about, you know, right now what we're doing. Uh, I'm excited about a lot of the changes that were made. Um, but you know what? I think I think with the XFL doing right now, there's enough talent for two leagues. There's a mm-hmm. lot of guys out there. And right now there's 800 people that are playing spring football that never did in the past. And so I would encourage everybody, turn on your TV, watch it. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at – the talent we have, and I would bet 80 or 90% of our team has been on an NFL roster. You know, they've been in the NFL. They've played for one, two, three years. They've started games in the NFL. Um, And now all of a sudden they have the opportunity to play here. And I think it's a great uh, opportunity for some of these players to uh, reinvent their career, to be able to get on the field and be able to show what they can do and hopefully get that opportunity to get back to the NFL again. Well, I have nothing else to add to that, Coach. That was just about perfect. <laughs> oh, well, I, love Ace, I appreciate you having me. I appreciate you having me tonight. Like I said, I'm excited to be on your show uh, and to be part of it, and certainly excited to be part of the Fox family and to be part of the USFL and the Birmingham Stallions. We're happy to have you, Coach, and I cannot wait for season two to watch your guys take the field. I know you're working real hard right now. Hopefully, it's not raining on you as much as it's raining on my guys down in Memphis, but. Very excited, Coach. We've we've avoided – had a little bit of cold weather on day one, but since then it's been great. So we'll just keep plugging along, moving forward, and keep dodging them, run, them thunderstorms. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Coach. Absolutely love having you. Thank you. I appreciate right. you having me. Have a good night. You as well. And everybody at home, this has been Tell Me About It, presented by the USFL Network. Gladly having on my rival, Skip Holtz. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you.